Hi, welcome to another video brought to you by TurboCamaro.ca. Today we're going to be doing a power lock upgrade, keyless entry alarm system install. I'm not going to get into the specifics of how to do each and every portion of an alarm system install. It's a fairly complex process that probably should be, should be done by professionals. I am not a professional alarm system installer, however, I am extremely familiar with the wiring of this car, as well as uh, how to wire the fairly basic alarm system I have in front of me here. So it is going to the 67 Turbo Camaro. It's going to be using this Pile Watchdog PWD 701 alarm system. It's a very basic alarm system, probably available for 35, 40 bucks on Amazon. It's fairly well reviewed, generally fairly high quality for the price. Uh, it doesn't have all of the bells and whistles that you'd expect out of a more expensive alarm, but then again, this is not an expensive alarm, it's a cheap alarm, but it will do the job for me. As you can see here, these are the features that come with this. Uh, specifically, I'm interested in the, the transmitters as well as the LED, the valet switch, the siren, and for the most part, uh, the impacts detector, like the shock sensor, is important. And I don't care all that much about the rest of it. I don't care about the lights. I don't intend to be carjacked uh, where I am here. Uh, the auxiliary outputs are relatively unimportant at this point. Uh, obviously, some of these extra features that you can have, such as the uh, the horn honking, the, the keyless entry is something I'm going to be doing. Uh, is the illuminated entry, all these other things, for the most part, I don't care. I am inevitably interested in remote auto start. However, that's not something that I can do right now or not for the maybe distant future, but we'll see. Uh, either way, this is the alarm system. I'll do a very quick unboxing here. Again, not getting going to get crazy with this with you. Uh, Six-tone siren, again, very basic, two-wire hookup. Uh, there's the actual alarm system module, the, the antenna coming off of it. You can see the harness will go into there, as well as some of the other optional wiring. And there's the harness there. It's got some inline fuses for the lights and, and things. Uh, you can see this is for the door lock actuator to relays. And there's the shock sensor with the little adjustable dial on it. And a bag of goodies here. Uh, trunk pin specifically so that you can, trunk or hoard I suppose, uh, pin so that you can uh, have it ground out when you uh, open or close the, the hood of the trunk allowing the alarm to go off. Uh, because I have now the brand new hood locks, I don't need it for the hood. I'm going to be putting it in the trunk uh, so that I have protection all over. And some other random wiring, there's the LED. I think it's blue in this kit. And I have not really sure what that is at the moment. And the valley switch. Uh, and obviously you'll want this to be able to do some programming and things like that. And then my most, pretty much the favorite part about the whole kit is the actual fob. As you can see here, it's discreet, but classy. Uh, fairly solid in the hand, like you'd think it would be a cheap piece of junk for the cost of this alarm. Uh, I don't actually care all that much for this little keychain thing, but the buttons, you know, like it's uh, like that blue, they're nice and chrome. It, again, it's obviously not suitable necessarily for a 67 Camaro. However, um, if I was going to pick a modern style black fob, this was probably what I would pick. I think this is um, nice. I've looked at some of the other kits by some of the more expensive ones and they look like crap and I'm not interested in that. So these are nice and that was pretty much a driving factor for buying this whole kit. So um, that's what I end up with. Something I recommend, not to try to drag on too much already, but um, get yourself a wiring diagram if you're going to jump into this. As you can see here, I have one of these fancy color-coded ones, keeping in mind it's a 67 Camaro as you can see here this is a 69 Camaro diagram some differences in the wiring specifically for me for the lights but I don't intend to install the lights so it doesn't matter now for the most part you can see here it actually is color-coded for each individual wire now again 67 Camaro it's a very basic wiring setup compared to that of a modern vehicle so a modern vehicle you might need like four of these sheets to be able to I actually have all the wires on one sheet, but for me, this is pretty much the entire car, and it's on one sheet in all these colors. It can be a little tricky to figure out, but again, it's pretty much a mandatory thing to be able to decipher the alarm system install. Uh, something else to consider, 
the actuator install. I found a little diagram on a site that uh, had a general idea for the placement. Um, this is actually very similar to where they're going to be installed, and that gives you kind of an exploded idea on it. Um, I pretty much copied this for the passenger side already, and I'll be showing you the driver side. Then I went ahead with the diagram and the alarm system manual and sort of did my own little rough idea of where I thought that the wires should probably go. At least that way I'm not out here blind trying to figure it out. So you can pretty much plan the install before you even get started. If you're intimidated by this or this, then I would honestly leave this to a professional. It's not something you're going to want to do. Um, the, the two wires that I mentioned earlier, the green and, and blue, that come off of the alarm system module go to relays. Uh, those relays are not included. So this kit, as much as it, yes, can do keyless entry with the fob, uh, that's not something that it actually does out of the box unless you already have power locks. So I need to upgrade from my manual locks to power locks. And that's what I have here. So I got myself two relays. These are five pin single output relays, very basic common thing. I have uh, wired them up already and soldered what I had to solder to make them so that they're going to be basically ready to install in the car. Obviously, I have to mount them somewhere, but I've got my ground. I've got uh, the power wire here ready to be hooked up to wherever. And then I've got the signal wires that are going to come from the the alarm system itself and uh, I'm pretty much ready to go. Alarm system signal of course and the then to the actual actuator. These are the actuators I'm using. I think the brand was Sodial on Amazon. Um, not a super expensive brand, fairly well reviewed and uh, they're supposed to be a heavy duty actuator. Who knows for sure. Keep in mind bullet connectors, more of a modern connector than what's in my car. Had to actually go out and buy uh, some bullet connector connectors to be able to actually use these with the stock connector. I could have cut them off and of course used other ones, but I don't mind these and you can still heat shrink over them fairly easily. So there you go. That's what I'm going to use. It's just a two screw, two wire actuator with the relay set up and of course the wiring for the alarm. Let's get started on the door lock install. Okay, we're just over here at the driver's side door. Uh, you can see here, I've already moved the door panel. I had removed the window latch, door handle, and then there was a armrest as well. And then behind that, I had a plastic membrane that I just secured with duct tape. Uh, it actually held perfectly well for the last couple of years. Uh, some of the duct tape won't come off even all that easy, so I'll have to play with that later. But either way, I wanna get into the actuator install. It's pretty tricky um, if you've never done one before because it's hard to identify the best location for how you're gonna have it actually engage the lock or disengage the lock. And then as well as making sure you're mounting in a location that isn't gonna interfere with anything else. In this car, it's relatively straightforward because the, there's not a lot going on. There's so much space between the door and the door panel. There's also a place to work around. However, you still got some things to think about. So these are the actuators you saw earlier. What I want to do is mount it in this configuration behind the door. Um, the reason for that is that the motor is towards the back. Uh, it's less likely to be exposed to uh, any kind of brackets that's right here. And it just seems to line up just right doing so. So you can see I've actually already drilled the holes that I'm going to use behind the door frame. So obviously it's going to go on the inside and go in this configuration. So in this position here, there's actually a little eyelet on the top. And with this eyelet, it actually has a rod, which I'll show you here. It attaches to the top of the actuator and it goes up. Now, it actually links to a rod that goes up further right into the actual lock knob. And so the wire rod comes down and then it goes into the locking assembly. So all I'm gonna really pretty much do is just run my rod from the actuator parallel to the other rod and then use, if I can find it, a little clip little clip that just kind of basically goes around the one rod and the other rod together and then you use the little provided screws and it joins the two rods together where you want to do it. Uh, the trick is to do it so that when you join the two rods you raise the actuator or lower it all the way one or the other. In this case I've got it raised all the way and then from there you just have to make sure the lock is all the way up so it would be unlocked and then you install it and then when you're done when it goes to depress it'll go all the way down and, and of course lock it and then it'll usually on its own it'll return under power to the sort of middle position which doesn't really affect your lock because it's not under any kind of stress and then from there when you fire either up or down it'll engage the lock properly uh, if you can actually connect to the rod 
of the existing lock, as I mentioned, or you can connect to the an eyelet that exists uh, maybe on your actual locking mechanism. So behind here on my car, there's a little eyelet sort of sticks out to the side. For me, it's actually kind of an awkward angle to get to it from down here if I want to continue to mount the actuators in this position. So I'm just going to go to the rod The provided clip worked well on the passenger side. So I'll do it on this side. All right, so the actuator is installed here. You can see where I use my screw holes. The easiest uh, way to line it up for me was to just basically use this uh, this clip holder here for the door panel. And just it's almost straight across for me. Just that's the way it worked out right for in this particular vehicle with these uh, these doors. Uh, and then what I did is I just used a piece of paper and made a little uh, quick template for the distance and then just drew another one that almost directly below so that the thing is more or less straight up and down. It may be slightly canted towards the top. Uh, at the top of the actuator, but that's uh, that's fine. So anyway, this is what it looks like. You can see it in there. Uh, you can see there's the brass or sort of rod that goes into the top of it there, and then it's mounted. And there's the, of course the, the two connectors. Now I'm gonna try to give you a look at how I actually did this here. So in through the door panel, you can see around the corner, right there, how I join them. There's the rod coming up, and it just goes parallel to the other rod, which goes up into the lock. I don't know if you can get that far or not. So the best I can do. Uh, and you can see here that uh, it's just basically joined parallel and then you just tighten those screws down. Very awkward to tighten the screws down, but definitely doable. Actually, there's a piece of a, uh, a grommet on there that doesn't need to be on there. But anyway, that would have been for the uh, door lock at some point. Uh, either way, I'll take that off and uh, you can see that how it's done. Make sure it's all tight. You could consider some thread locker on those as well to keep them from coming loose. I made them as tight as I humanly possibly could. So if they do come loose, I'll have to disassemble and use some thread locker next time. But uh, I'm overall pretty happy with that. Again, make sure the actuator is fully in the upward position and the door lock is in the upper position and then you can screw it down. And then now you can see here, it still functions manually, of course but uh, now I'll be able to use the uh, ground and positive terminal to connect. So I'm gonna go ahead and run some wires for that. Then you say to yourself, well, how do I get the wires from the door to the inside of the car in a vehicle that doesn't have power or anything? Uh, this, it's a good solution to that. You can get the rubber boot for your car that probably had a wiring boot for some version of your car that had power locks. Obviously these cars back in the day had power windows and things like that. So there were boots available. I'm going to use this. It's a Keep It Clean brand. Uh, it's a braided stainless steel with billet aluminum um, door loom is what it's called. Uh, about $45 Canadian. Uh, to get two of these. I, I did one on the other side. I'm gonna go basically drill a hole that will allow this massive, uh, I think it's about a three quarter inch um, thread here to go through the door and the same thing on the other side of the kick panel. So unfortunately it does involve me removing the kick panel here, which is fine. They need some cleaning anyway. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. I've got a new uh, switch to install for the dome light, which will be, uh, might as well go in while I'm at it, and then uh, we'll get that uh, door loom run. All right, so the actuator's all wired up there. You can see I just uh, used electrical tape, and I ended up using just butt connectors. I couldn't find another bowl-style connector. So uh, either way, uh, I just recommend, no matter what you do with this, use high-quality, good, like 3M brand vinyl electrical tape. Don't use the dollar store stuff. I know it looks the same. It's not the same. The stuff will be on here in 10 years, whereas the uh, the dollar store stuff will be gone in two years and it unravel, and then you'll have shorting out connections, and that won't be the greatest. So go ahead and do that. Once you have the wire running, I just got some wire here, goes through the bottom of the door, and it comes up, and it goes into the keep it right loom. Uh, the, the space, so essentially it's a conduit. You can see here as the door opens and closes, this is an inner wire or inner loom actually moves through the bolt housing there. And you can see then it goes through the door jam area. Looks very pretty despite it being dirty, it looks pretty. And it goes through that side, just nice and straight. It doesn't obviously pinch when the door closes. It looks like it might on video, but it doesn't. And then from there it comes into the car and you can see there that uh, it just runs nice there. So basically then you can go ahead and run the wire to wherever you're gonna mount the alarm and you can cut it off if you want or wait till later. And we'll go ahead and uh, wire up the alarm now. 
All right, so here's a very rough mock-up of the alarm system. As you can see here, this is just looks insane. There's wires all over the place and there's no real organization to it. And that's unfortunately not how I normally work, but for the sake of a mock-up on the floor of a car, this is pretty much the best I could do uh, just for the where all the wires are. So as you can see here, I've got the main module, I've got the shock sensor here, I've got uh, all the other connections made that I want to use. Uh, I've got the two relays back here for the uh, door lock actuators. And then I've got um, the also the door trigger for the dome light. So that way if the door gets open, the alarm goes off. I've got a dome light trigger in the trunk. It's just basically a pin switch that came with. I put that behind a hinge. You'll never be able to tell it's there. And it uh, allows me to have some security for the trunk. And not that you couldn't just pop the trunk, grab the thing you wanted and run away, but I digress, it's there. And then also, of course, the uh, siren and, and just other basic connections were made. This will all have to be trimmed, properly crimped and or soldered uh, and put in such a place that it's difficult to get to while still being something that can be serviced if necessary. Really what you need to have is the valet switch accessible because it's what allows you to do the basic configuration as well as um, having the LED visible for just the status. Uh, I opted actually, as you can see here, LED, as much as that looks rough, is right there. There was already a hole, there's actually another one right beside it hole uh, that it fit in perfectly. So I didn't have to drill any holes in the dash. Same with the valet switch, I was able to use a pre-existing hole so I wasn't punching holes in the car. It's bad enough as it is having to hack up uh, existing car wiring to do this. So really this is um, not gonna take a ton, a huge toll on the car the way it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a quick test here for you guys. As you can see here, I've already gone and, and tested this. You can see the light comes on every time you tap it. And I kind of you know, bang on the car, you can get it to, or to do it too. Obviously, once I get it mounted, either on the steering column or on some other dash support, I'll have to reuse the screw here to adjust the sensitivity. But you get the general idea. I'm going to go and take my fancy door stopper Nutella can away. I'm going to try this thing out. Doors are currently unlocked. I got my very pretty looking fob. And we're gonna go ahead and try just a regular arming. You guys can see that in there. That's locked. Unlock. And now, lock and let's try and break in with the key Ooh, sensitive have to be pretty like pretty careful with this all right fob in hand let's open her up And that's that. So alarm system mostly installed. It uh, took a little while to get all the wiring, uh, figuring out what was what. But now that I've got it, I think it looks horrible on the floor, but should work very well. I'm pretty happy about uh, the overall function and simplicity of the alarm itself. So as it is, uh, feel free to give me a, a message on YouTube or Twitter or Facebook. I can be reached on YouTube as Turbo Camaro and Facebook and Twitter as Turbo Camaro 67. Thank you for watching.